Machiavelli's The Prince has a very important piece of information that I think everyone should know before they uh, dive into the story. And namely, that is actually a little bit about the history of Machiavelli. Now, I'm not going to pull this up on Wikipedia or anything. I'm just going off the top of my brain. Um, I am not an expert on his life. Okay. I'm just telling you the stuff I remember, and I'm more than willing to admit I'm out of date. If I get something wrong, or if I, like, you know, I'm talking about something and people are like, no, that was a theory a while back, but it's now this. And feel free to let me know. I don't mind. In fact, I would love to have a discussion about it. Um, be warned, I love debating. And if you start to debate with me, you will, well, probably lose. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to win. That's right. Because I'm talking and you can't talk. <laughs> yeah, I just won the maturity award of YouTube right there. Okay, anyway, seriously, guys. Um, Machiavelli wrote the prince towards, wait for it, a prince. Yeah, I know. I believe the prince was actually a prince of Rome, a prince of Italy, not just any old prince. Why is this particularly interesting? Because <clears throat> I do believe that the prince in question was the one Machiavelli aligned himself with who attempted to overthrow the Vatican. Now, if you're sitting here and going, oh, Machiavelli is an evil person, well, congratulations. I'm glad you buy the Vatican's propaganda, and that is exactly what it is. If I told you the story, oh, who was that? You know, the Galileo, the world is round, but the, the church forced him to say it was flat, that story, which is not necessarily true, but we're going to go that, not that direction right now. <clears throat> And you find out that, wait for it, Galileo was actually on really good terms with the Pope, and they were really good friends until they had a falling out, and all of a sudden then Galileo's research was so scandalous. You should not be surprised, <clears throat> because I'm pretty sure that is what happened. Uh, it was not because his belief that the world is round was so scandalous that it offended everyone and it upset all this theology and stuff. That is just the story that was created by the church. Uh, the reality is, I'm very confident Galileo Galilei, I think that's his name. Please, if I get it wrong, sorry. Again, off memory here, guys. Um, he, uh, he was good friends with the Pope. And they actually had often discussions about this very subject. And the Pope was very receptive of them until something happened and Galileo basically um, suggested that a, like, a public figure strongly connected with the Vatican was uh, SOB. I think that would be acceptable. And uh, basically the Pope either had to like, you know, stand up for the public figure he had to be associated with or his actual friend. And well, he did what most people would have to do in that situation, which is basically condone his friend. And all of a sudden Galileo's research is a scandal. This is all pretty standard in my understanding. I believe people know that one now more than they did before. Um, I remember reading about that, so I'm pretty sure that one's publicly available. And uh, wait for it, Machiavelli is in the same vein. Uh, he actually worked for the Pope after writing this book. <laughs> yeah, um, that, here's a kicker right there. So the timeline roughly follows this. Machiavelli meets a guy we will call the Prince. I don't remember his name, okay? Um, the Prince basically had a rightful claim to the throne of Italy, to be the king of Rome, the king of Italy. I'm not sure how exactly that works, because honestly, I know enough about feudal Italy to know that their nobility, their land rights, their territory gets... So confusing that it just gives me a headache. So, yeah, I'm not trying to be precise there. What the point is, is in order to accomplish his goals, he basically had to throw the Pope down as the leading secular authority of the city. In other words, it was a coup d'etat. Machiavelli wrote the prince as a gift to this person who was planning to topple the Catholic Church 
In order to gain the man's confidence, his trust, and his support, Machiavelli literally made this piece to go to that man and say, I am good at uh, being a manipulative bleep. Uh, <laughs> underhanded, backstabbing, yada, yada, yada. And he's literally saying, my gift to you is my knowledge. Here it is. It is everything. It is the most precious thing. And with it, I think you have a better chance of succeeding. Anyway, obviously, according to the history books, it is should be obvious, Machiavelli failed. Yeah, I don't know what happened to the prince. I'm guessing it was not pretty. I don't think I need to guess. I'm pretty sure he ended up with his head on a wall somewhere. Um, Machiavelli, in order to survive, basically had to go to one of the Pope's friends, his advisors, who Machiavelli knew, because they were actually on good terms, and basically get the guy to stand up for Machiavelli and defend Machiavelli. And that is the only way he survived, by basically becoming an employee of the Vatican. Um, if that doesn't tell you a lot of what you need to know about what is considered to be one of the more scandalous books ever written, um, well, it should help set you on the right path. Because this is not the most scandalous book ever written. It was literally written by a man plotting to bring down the Vatican. And he came closer than most people would like to admit, honestly. Um, a lot of things that happened after these events make me think that, honestly, Machiavelli probably accomplished a lot of his goals and is one of the main reasons the protest Protestant Reformation became an actual thing. If you've never studied the timeline, Machiavelli and the timeline of the Protestant Reformation are almost perfect. It's like two or three years after this, which is about the time it would take for it to disseminate. Um, in other words, what was that guy's name? Oh, I see. I almost said Martin Luther King. No, no, no. Um, Luther? Luther. Lutherans. Lutherans. Oh, what is his name? Oh, crap. Anyway, that guy, the, the one who did the 50 things on a church door, that guy, yeah, he was, he was, he probably actually read letters talking about Machiavelli. He probably talked to his friends about Machiavelli. They probably gossiped about Machiavelli and Machiavelli's attempt to overthrow the Vatican. Yeah. Anyway. Um, this should set the stage for the book. Uh, go ahead and turn over and listen to the introduction, and you should see a lot of what I'm saying in the part that I read. You guys have a good one.